Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my new series, Project Stug. With Project Mouse drawing to a close, I wanted something else to scratch build. I've learned a lot while building the mouse, and really enjoyed solving various design issues, and finding out about new techniques. But I wanted my next project to have a bit more detail to get my teeth into. After the mouse, I decided I wanted to build a smaller subject in a bigger scale, making it easier to go to town on the detail. My main problem was finding a subject that I could get plenty of source information on, and some decent plans. There were loads of potential projects out there that I would have readily taken on, but either I couldn't get the plans, or there was a technical issue that I was struggling with. So, after a lot of thought, I decided to go for a Stug. The Sturmgeschutz III assault gun, or Stug III, was essential as infantry support for the German army in the Second World War. The Stug III was based on the hull of the Panzer III, and first saw action in 1940, serving throughout the war. With many variants and lots of detail changes, there's plenty of opportunity to build something very interesting. So, what am I going to go for? Well, the plan is to make a Stug III G from the end of the war, with Zimmerit and Schertzen. This will be in 1 12th scale, so it's going to be a pretty big model. I also plan to add the crew, and create a diorama. I think I have most of the design issues worked out, but let's see. I've been collecting Stug books for a while now, so I'm pretty sure I have all the information I need. The first part of this video is a review of my Stug books, so if you want to skip past the books, go to the time shown on the screen. This pair of volumes are currently the best source for Stug material. The first volume is really a history of the Stug, mainly from a technical perspective, and as the title says, deals with development, production and deployment. The second volume is perfect for the modeler, covering all variants and going into incredible detail regarding all the versions and changes of the Stug 3. There are a lot of technical drawings, with every variant covered. These are two superb books. I only have a few minor complaints. The paper quality does let down some of the images. The lack of a walk around, or any modern photos, is disappointing, as is the lack of profiles to represent the different variants. Otherwise these books have it all. The next two books are from the Spielberger Doyle Library, and are mainly from a technical perspective. They are both well produced on glossy paper, with Hilary Doyle's usual well detailed drawings. I got the Panzer III book as it explains more about the lower hull and running gear, but it also has a lot on the Stug. The Stug book covers the Stug III, Stug IV and support vehicles. Both books have lots of period workshop photos, so make a great reference. The Panzer Tract series is an excellent source of technical drawings for the Stug, even though this is the Panzer III volume. The lower hull and accessories are very well covered. This is a great series, although some issues are hard to get. Now for a new publication by Abtilung 502. This focuses more on the crew and deployment than the other books, and covers in depth the various camouflage schemes of the Stug. It also features a section on the crew uniforms, which will be very useful later on in the project. It's a great book, covering aspects of Stug life not covered in other publications. And these are the last two books. The On the Battlefield series is a great source for modelling and diorama ideas, but it does have a couple of drawbacks. Often you'll find several photos of the same subject, but my big issue is that because each book is a collection of Stugs of all types, if you just want information on the Stug Aus D, you have to get all the volumes, unless you can see before you buy. Finally, the Haynes Enthusiasts Manual. This has a bit of everything, covering the history of the Stug without going into much detail, but it does have some excellent photos and a walk around which gives the modeler a lot of useful detail. I'm still planning a museum visit to get up close and personal with a Stug, but that'll have to wait until lockdown is over and the museums are open again. Now, let's see how big the Stug's going to be in 1 12th scale. These plans were scanned from the Muller Zimmermann books and enlarged in Coral Draw before being printed. 
This will be the actual size of the model I'm creating. It is bigger than the mouse which is in 1 24th scale, so the detail should be easily manageable. There are still a few issues I have to resolve, but nothing too serious. The section view is just for reference. My Stug won't have an interior. I've made a start on the upper hull in my CAD software, and I've worked out that I can just about 3D print the fighting compartment as one part, and the engine deck as another. I'm going to try and print it with the cupola base in place, for accuracy. This is the fighting compartment in the slicing software. As you can see it only just fits on the printer. This will be the largest part I've ever 3D printed, so I hope it goes well. And here it is on the 3D printer. The total print time for this part is 84 hours. I'm printing everything in ABS, which is strong and durable, but it does have some issues when it comes to 3D printing. As the print progressed, it started to warp up from the print bed at the corners. I did get pretty worried, as the last thing I needed was it coming off the print bed after 83 hours, unfinished. ABS has a reputation for warping, and the type I was using was supposed to be pretty good. Fortunately, it stabilised, and didn't get any worse. It definitely stopped warping as the print went on, with the print quality improving all the time. It was at this stage I thought I may have gone a bit overkill with the design. This part was going to be super strong and heavy, with all the ABS going into it. And here it is off the printer. It is a bit of a brick, but the surface finish is really good. The white layers on the edges are stress marks from the shrinkage as the ABS cools. Let's see how far the sides have warped and the end is out of square. It looks pretty bad, but I can easily build it up with Milliput, so it's not a disaster. I also 3D printed the engine deck. I did this with the side vents in place. I had to create support material for the internal fins, but this came out too thick, making cleanup difficult. I cleaned up one side which took ages, and I still wasn't happy with the result. So I decided to print the vents separately, without supports. They came out really well, and were much easier to clean up than on the engine deck. It was at this point that I discovered I'd made a serious error. I had taken the specified width to be including the Schurzen brackets, when in actual fact it was only to the width of the track guards. This meant that my plans were about 4mm too narrow. I didn't want to reprint the upper hull, so I decided to 3D print some add-on parts to correct the width. That's what these yellow parts are. So, with these parts added, I now began the long process of filling, filing and sanding to get everything straight and square. The engine deck had a lot of distortion in it, which I had to file out, but the end result came out well. Eventually, I was happy with the fighting compartment as well. The milliput had corrected the warping to the rear bulkhead, and all the widths were spot on. I filled and sanded it smooth, even though some of it's going to get a coat of zimmerit. I mentioned before that I may have gone a bit overkill with the design. Well, here's an idea of how strong it is. I won't tell you my weight, let's just say I'm more of an elephant than a mouse. And here's the fighting compartment and engine deck, ready for the next stage, adding the detail. The detail is the part I enjoy, but you'll have to wait until the next episode to see how well that goes. I hope you find Project Stug interesting and enjoy seeing the progress. If you do, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more from Staples and Vine. If you have any questions about Project Stug, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.